Welcome to your virtual total shoulder replacement seminar. My name is Debbie and I'm the orthopedic nurse navigator at Mary Immaculate Hospital. Thank you for choosing Mary Immaculate Hospital to help restore you to a higher quality of living with your new total shoulder replacement. This presentation will help to outline the surgical process from preparation to completion, providing clear expectations regarding your orthopedic care. You play a key role in ensuring a successful recovery. Our goal is to involve you in your treatment through each step of the program. Your education and compliance will help to ensure a safe and successful surgical outcome. Please feel free to contact myself or Shannon Dietrich, our orthopedic program coordinator, by phone or email with any questions about this presentation or your upcoming surgery. We work closely together and are here to help you through the process. The information we talk about today will also be available in an educational booklet that you'll be able to download from the Mary Immaculate website. If you are unable to download this booklet, please contact Shannon or myself for help doing so. Pre-anesthesia testing. Common tests you may have to have done before surgery include lab work, which is non-fasting, EKG, chest x-ray, urinalysis. You do not need an appointment at Mary Immaculate Hospital to come in and have these tests done. Testing must be completed within 30 days before surgery. If you're required to have a physical examination with your primary care physician or see a specialist for medical clearance, you must have these clearances and an examination done within 30 days before surgery. Your surgeon will let you know if this is a requirement. Please make sure to have these tests and examinations done. If you fail to do so, your surgery may be postponed or canceled. Pre-operative nursing interview. You will get a phone call three to four weeks before your surgery to schedule your nursing interview. During this important interview, you will be asked to share your medical history, your surgical history, your allergies to food and medication, you will also be asked to provide a list of your medications, including dosage and how often you take them. Make sure that you also have available your vitamins, herbal supplements, and any over-the-counter medications that you might take. You will be instructed where and how to pick up your chlorhexidine cleansing solution, which you will use starting three days before surgery, and you will be instructed where and when to go get your COVID test. After your COVID test, you will be expected to quarantine until you have surgery. What medications to stop? During your pre-anesthesia testing interview, you will be instructed on which medications to stop and which medications you should continue to take. If you have any questions about a specific medication and you're not sure what to do, please reach out to your surgeon's office or your prescribing doctor to get clarification. All herbal supplements should be stopped 14 days before surgery. Pain medications such as non-steroidal anti-inflammatories are generally requested to be stopped 7 to 10 days prior to surgery due to the increased risk of bleeding when taking these medications. Examples of these include Aleve, Motrin, Advil, Mobic, Ibuprofen, Naproxen, Celebrex, and Vitorin. Please check with your surgeon regarding when to stop these medications if you're not clear. Medications you may take instead for pain include Tylenol, also known as acetaminophen, hydrocodone, Percocet, Tramadol, Vicodin, Gabapentin, Lyrica, and Neurontin. Anticoagulation, or also known as blood thinning medications, are also generally requested to be stopped in the weeks leading up to the surgery. Examples of blunt thinner medications include Coumadin, Plavix, Prodaxa, Effiant, Xeralto, Eliquis, and Aspirin. Please check with your surgeon and prescribing physician regarding when to stop these. Vaccines. You may get your flu shot prior to surgery. During flu season, if you have not had your flu vaccine and you are spending the night in the hospital, Please ask your nurse about getting the flu vaccine before you leave. 
However, it is best to get the flu vaccine before you come to the hospital for surgery. Please consult your surgeon regarding additional vaccines, including the COVID-19 vaccine. Get yourself ready for surgery. This begins with picking a coach. A coach can be a family member or a friend, but should be someone who can help you the first few days after you return home from the hospital. Your coach should be educated regarding your surgical preparation. Have your coach watch this video and read the shoulder booklet from the hospital so that he or she can help you stay on track during your recovery. Stop smoking. Smoking increases your risk of lung complications during and after surgery. It also decreases your ability to heal your new shoulder. If you aren't ready to stop smoking yet, please try to cut back a few weeks before surgery and do not smoke the day of surgery. Stop alcohol intake or at a minimum, limit the amount of alcohol intake at least two weeks prior to surgery. Also, remember, do not drink alcohol while you are taking narcotic pain medication. After surgery, check with your surgeon before you resume alcohol. Eating healthy. Proper nutrition is an important factor in healing. Maintaining a healthy diet decreases the risk of heart disease, high blood pressure, and diabetes. It also promotes healing to your new surgical site. Prepare and freeze or purchase small portion healthy meals for times when you may be alone. ChooseMyPlate.gov is a great online reference to learn more about proper nutrition. There is additional nutritional tip sheet in the appendix of your educational booklet. Create a safe home environment. Install hand railings where necessary. Remove tripping hazards such as throw rugs and long cords. A shower grab bar and adjustable spray nozzle may be helpful after your shoulder replacement. Please stay active before surgery. Remember, sitting around is considered the same as smoking for your health. Advances in orthopedic surgical practices have resulted in an increasing number of patients who may discharge from the hospital on the day of surgery, recovering in the safety and comfort of your home. Ask your surgeon if he plans to safely discharge you on the day of surgery versus having you spend one night in the hospital. Packing for the hospital. Even if you plan to discharge on the day of surgery, it is best to have a small overnight bag packed in the event that you may need to stay. Items to pack in your bag would include shirts that button down the front and shoes with rubber soles to prevent slipping. Personal hygiene toiletries, including a toothbrush, deodorant, and hairbrushes. Supportive or adaptive equipment, such as a CPAP machine. A list of your current medications, including how often you take them and how much you take. Payment for your prescriptions, a copy of your advanced medical directive, denture and glasses cases. Make sure to label all your belongings and please leave your valuables at home. Countdown to surgery. Four weeks prior to surgery, schedule your preoperative physical with your primary care physician. Plan for our pre-anesthesia department to call you to schedule your nursing interview. Make sure to come and have your lab work done within 30 days of your surgery. Begin preparing your home and make sure to eat three healthy meals a day. If you're not getting enough protein in, make sure that you are supplementing with protein supplements, especially the week before surgery. 10 to 14 days prior to surgery, stop taking any medications you are instructed to stop by your the PAT nurse or your physician. Cease alcohol intake and smoking. Prepare healthy meals to freeze and reheat after surgery. Three days prior to surgery, begin using your chlorhexidine gluconate, also known as CHG, skin cleansing solution. Follow the instructions provided with your solution for use in the shower all three nights prior to surgery. Do not shower on the morning of surgery. Remember, do not use any lotions, perfumes, or deodorants in the three days prior to surgery once you start cleaning your skin. 
The day before surgery, make sure to pack your small overnight bag and label everything that you put in that bag. The day before surgery, your surgeon's office will call you and let you know what time your surgery is and what time you need to be at the hospital to check in. They will also tell you where to check in. Remember, do not eat or drink anything after midnight before surgery. This includes gum, mints, or hard candy. The day of surgery, you may get up and brush your teeth and use mouthwash. Please make sure to rinse and spit and not to swallow any water. You may take a sip of water with any of the medications you've been instructed to take before you come to the hospital. It is important you wear loose fitting clothes with shirts that button down the front and are easy to be removed. Remember, do not put deodorant or lotions on your skin the morning of surgery. Leave all your jewelry and valuables at home. And do not smoke the day of surgery. Depending on the operating room your surgeon is using for the day of surgery, you will either report to the main desk on the ground floor of the surgical pavilion, which is adjacent to the emergency room, or to the surgical waiting area on the second floor of two South Orthopedics. You will enter through the main entrance of the hospital, which faces Denby Boulevard. Your surgeon's office will let you know which entrance that you need to take for surgery. Once you arrive to the hospital, you will be escorted to the preoperative preparation area. Your skin will be cleansed again with CHG wipes and your nostrils will be swabbed with an antiseptic and you will be changed into a very fashionable gown. A nurse will review your medical records and conduct a brief physical examination to include vital signs, which is our blood pressure, pulse, temperature, respirations, breathing, and they may also ask you your weight or weigh you. An IV tube will be inserted into your vein for medication administration. You will be provided with a blanket attached to a machine that blows warm air through the blanket to help maintain a normal body temperature before surgery. This helps to decrease the risk of infection after surgery. Lastly, you will meet your surgeon and anesthesiologist to sign consents for surgery. After meeting your surgical team, medications like antibiotics and fluids will be administered through your IV line. Other medications may be given to alleviate any anxiety you may be experiencing. If you wear dentures or eyeglasses, you will need to remove them at this time. Anesthesia information. Your anesthesia care team consists of your anesthesiologist and a nurse anesthetist who are responsible for your comfort and well-being before, during, and immediately after your surgery. They will meet with you in the pre-op area to develop an anesthesia care plan based on your medical history, your medications, and your personal needs. You will receive general anesthesia for your shoulder replacement. General anesthesia is a combination of anesthetic gases that you breathe in and medications that are given through your IV while you're asleep and comfortable during surgery. In the pre-op area, you will be given an inner scaling nerve block. A nerve block is an injection of a local anesthetic onto or near a nerve for temporary pain control. The block is a single injection performed at the base of your neck and into the group of nerves that supplies the affected arm. It is a sensory and motor block, which means you will not be able to feel or move your arm after the injection. This block will provide you pain relief for six to 12 hours after surgery. Expirel, this medication or a similar, similar alternative medication is injected into the tissue around the joint during surgery to provide pain management for 12 to 24 hours after surgery. In the operating room, your anesthesia provider will monitor and manage your vital functions, including your heart rate and rhythm, blood pressure, temperature, and breathing. You will be asked to breathe oxygen in through a mask as you are ready for anesthesia. Once you are asleep, there will be a timeout, which is a verification for the correct patient and operative site for safety purposes. This will be performed by the surgical team, including your surgeon, prior to surgery. The average length of time for a shoulder replacement is anywhere from one to two hours. 
If you're having a revision, this may require more time. Due to COVID-19, our policy is constantly changing about visitors. Please check with your surgeon's office to find out if you can have a visitor come with you to the hospital the day of surgery. Your, your visitor or family will be notified in person or via telephone about your surgery after your surgery is completed. After surgery, you'll be taken to the post-anesthetic care unit, also called the recovery room, where you would continue to be under the care of an anesthesiologist. Your vital signs will be observed closely as the effects of anesthesia begin to wear off. Early on, you may feel sleepy, dizzy, and confused. It is not unusual to be groggy for the remainder of the day. After you have been deemed stable by your anesthesia care team, you will be moved to the, from the PACU to either two South Orthopedics or Phase 2 of the Surgical Pavilion, where you will continue to be recovered under the care of your surgeon and our nursing team. What to expect during your hospital stay? Your vital signs will be assessed every four hours. IV fluids will be given to help hydrate your body after surgery. Antibiotics will also be given intravenously for the first 24 hours to help prevent infection. If you go home the day of surgery, you will be given a prescription of oral antibiotics to complete when you get home. Sequential compression device, SCDs. These are shaped like sleeves that wrap around the legs to inflate air one at a time. This movement imitates walking, promoting blood flow, which helps to prevent blood clots. Keep these on while you're in the bed. They will be removed when you get up to sit, stand, or walk. Support stockings, also called TED hose. After surgery, compression stockings may be placed on both legs if ordered by your surgeon. This is to help promote circulation and to decrease swelling. You will wear them daily, only removing them at night until your follow-up appointment with your surgeon. Incentive spirometer. This is a device that will help your lungs prevent fluid buildup and decrease the chance of running a fever after surgery. You should use this device whether in the hospital or at home 10 times every hour while you're awake to prevent pneumonia and decrease the chance of running a fever. You can also cough and deep breathe to help lung congestion and prevent pneumonia. But the best way to prevent any problems with your lungs is to get up and walk. Pain management. Pain should be expected after surgery. The goal is to make sure you have pain tolerance. Pain tolerance is you still have pain, but you can do everything you need to do to take care of yourself and to recover after surgery. Your nurse will work with you to establish pain goals to help ensure that your pain is tolerable but do not expect to be totally pain-free. We use pain medication, ice, and positioning, distraction to help with your pain. If you had the scalene or interscalene nerve block in the pre-op area, you will feel the effects of that for up to 12 hours. You will notice that the pain gradually gets worse as this block wears off in your arm. Ice to your shoulder will be used to help with swelling and pain control. You should continue to use ice at home until your shoulder is recovered. You can do ice 20 minutes on and 20 minutes off as much as you like. Make sure you do not apply any heat to your shoulder in the recovery phase. Keeping the swelling down is one of the most important things you can do to help you achieve pain tolerance. You will wake up with your arm in a sling. Your arm may still be asleep from the inner scaling block, so the sling will help to keep your arm in a proper position so that you don't do any damage to your new shoulder replacement. After your shoulder wakes up, you will still need to wear the sling for support. At home, wear your sling anytime you're in bed changing positions, you standing up to sit in a chair, or you're walking. If you are sitting in a chair and you're awake, you can loosen the straps while using pillows to support your shoulder. Once you are allowed to take a shower, do not shower with the sling on. You will need to remove the sling and then gently 
ease your arm so that your hand hangs down by your side. Then you can clean under your armpit and wash your body off. Pat your dressing dry once you're allowed to shower and then put your arm back in the sling. Therapy after surgery. An occupational therapist will see you as needed to assess your ability to perform your daily activities such as bathing, dressing, toileting, and how to use the sling properly. In working with you, they will determine if you need some assistive devices to help you with grooming and dressing. Expect to be up and out of the bed with physical therapy or your nursing staff within two hours of getting to your room. A physical therapist will work with you to ensure that you are practicing safe mobility to include going up and down stairs, along with getting in and out of a bed or a chair. Depending on your surgeon's orders and instructions, if you are to do any exercises at home, the physical therapist will show you how to do them. Remember, do not do any exercises that your surgeon has not instructed you to do after surgery. While you're in the hospital and when you go home, you may be taking different medications, so let's review them here. Pain medication. In addition to ice, positioning, and support of your shoulder on pillows, your doctor will choose medications to help you manage your pain. The first line we start with is non-narcotic medications such as Tylenol or acetaminophen and occasionally an anti-inflammatory to help with pain control. These do not have uh, side effects like narcotics do. Narcotics prescription will be sent home to you and will be available to you while you're in the hospital. Therefore, it is important for you to communicate with your nurse regarding your pain level. While you're in the hospital, you will be asked to rate the intensity of your pain through using this Juan Baker numeric scale. The pain scale is li line is numbered 0 to 10. 0 meaning you're not hurting at all, all the way up to 10 being the worst pain you can possibly imagine. Based on your pain level, your doctor has decided what medication you should be given. You may or may not be given an anticoagulant or a blood thinner after surgery to take. Your surgeon will decide if it is appropriate for you and what kind if you're taking it. Make sure to prevent blood clots that you get up and move around every hour, rotate your wrists, um, and change positions. Your home medications. Your home medications will be provided to you here in the hospital during your stay, so do not bring them with you to the hospital when you come. If you go home the day of surgery, your nurses will review which medications you can resume and which medications to continue to hold and not take. If you get home and you're not sure, please reach out to your surgeon to know which medications to continue to take and which to stop. Mary Immaculate has an outpatient pharmacy located on the first floor of the medical pavilion. You may choose to have your prescriptions filled there or you can use your own pharmacy and your prescriptions will be sent to your outpatient to your pharmacy. We provide you this outpatient pharmacy for your convenience, but you do not have to feel obligated to use our pharmacy. Precautions. Blood clots. Blood clots can happen after surgery sometimes. They usually occur in either leg and are called a deep vein thrombosis. When a blood clot goes unrecognized in your leg, it can break away from the vein and travel, causing damage to your other organs. To prevent a blood clot, the most important thing you can do is to get up and walk every hour. Make sure you're doing your ankle pumps and rotating your feet while you're sitting in a chair 10 times an hour while you're awake. Make sure to do range of motion, uh, squeezing and releasing your hand and rotating your wrist to also help promote circulation to your arm. While you're in the hospital, you'll wear your SCD um, pumps when you're not up walking around. You'll wear your support hose if you have them until your surgeon tells you you're safe to not wear them anymore. Remember, at home, you can take them off at night, wash them, hang them up to dry, and then put them back on. Warning signs of a blood clot include swelling, pain to your ankles, calves, and feet. 
that do not get better if you use ice, you elevate your legs with your toes higher than your heart level, and you take pain medication. Please elevate if you notice the swelling starting in your um, legs. If you notice you have chest pain when you take a deep breath in or you feel extremely short of breath all of a sudden, make sure to tell your nurse why you're here or if you're at home, please call 911. Now remember, it is normal to have swelling, warmth and redness at your surgical site in your arm and sometimes you can have swelling in your legs as part of your recovery after surgery. Constipation. Constipation is a common side effect of anesthesia and narcotics. So it's important that you make sure you're on a stool softener. If your bowels don't move within two to three days of surgery, make sure that you also take a laxative and throughout the whole process, make sure you're staying hydrated. If your urine is the color of lemonade and not apple juice, then you're drinking enough. Pneumonia. Pneumonia happens after surgery when we don't take deep breaths and fluid builds up in the lower part of our lungs. So the best way to prevent pneumonia is one, to get up and walk around and change positions. Two is to use this incentive spirometer machine 10 times an hour to encourage you to take deep breaths. Infection. Anytime you have surgery, there's always the risk of an infection. To prevent an infection, make sure to keep your incision covered. Do not remove your dressing for any reason. If it starts to drain, which can be normal, make sure to reinforce it with a gauze. Make sure when you are allowed to shower that you cover the dressing with saran wrap to keep it dry. Do not submerge your new joint underwater in swimming pool, bathtub, or hot tub. Notify your surgeon's office or your home nurse, home health nurse, if you have one, if you notice increased redness, drainage, pain at the site, smell a foul odor, um, or if your temperature is greater than 100.5 and you've been taking your deep breaths and um, it is not relieved by taking deep breaths or Tylenol. If this happens, let your nurse know or call your surgeon immediately. Recovering after surgery at home. Plan to go home to recover after your shoulder replacement. You will rest better, eat better, go to the bathroom easier, and generally feel better in your own home environment. Not all patients are gonna need home health after a shoulder replacement. Your surgeon and care team will decide if you do need a home health therapist or nurse to come out and check on you. If your surgeon orders home health, the care manager will come and see you while you're in the hospital. They will discuss your home health options and work with your insurance to make sure the agency you choose is able to come to your house and continue providing you care per your surgeon's orders. In case you don't need any home health therapy, make sure you arrange for a family member or friend to be available to help you when you get home. Before we end our presentation today, I want to address some frequently asked questions. What should I do with my dressing? Nothing. Leave it alone. Do not remove it. Do not put ointments, lotions, creams, or powders near your new surgical site. Your body is healing itself under that dressing. Remember, some drainage is normal and don't worry about it. But if you notice that you have a lot of drainage under the dressing or the dressing is starting to pull loose, we want you to cover it with gauze, tape it, and then call your surgeon to let him know or let him or her know. When can I take a shower after surgery? That is up to your surgeon. Make sure to review your discharge instructions for when you can shower. Until then, you're gonna be taking a sponge bath in the immediate post-operative period. So make sure when you're bathing off that you clean around your incision, your arm, your armpit, around your necks, because bacteria can build up, which increases your risk of infection. When will you be able to return to work or drive? Your surgeon will let you know at your first post-op checkup, which is usually seven to 10 days after surgery, when you will be able to drive and return to work. This is dependent on if you're still on pain medication, how your recovery go is going, and what kind of job you do. At your first seven to 10 day post-op checkup, you may be sent to outpatient therapy and your doctor's office will make those arrangements. Please don't drive until you get 
cleared to do so by your doctor, and if you're taking narcotics, please do not drive. How long will I need to take a narcotic pain medication? Well, as we've talked previously, there's many ways to manage your pain, including ice, supporting the shoulder, wearing your sling, and taking a non-narcotic medication such as Tylenol. However, everybody is different on how long they will be on a narcotic. It depends on um, your pain tolerance. So please make sure that you use everything in your power to control your pain, and then the last thing you should take is a narcotic. Please do not take your narcotic around the clock scheduled, but only take it for severe pain, and then it will work better for you. Thank you for watching this joint seminar about your shoulder replacement. Please feel free to reach out to myself, Debbie Boudet, the Orthopedic Nurse Navigator, or Shannon Dietrich, the Orthopedic Program Coordinator, through email or calling our office numbers if you have any questions. We look forward to working with you and helping you manage this process of having a shoulder replacement. Thank you and have a blessed day.